there are quite a few books here, aren't there? Considering they were all written about one man. His name was Matt Talbot. Who was he? Well, he was a drunkard. A confirmed drunkard. Then why all the books about him? Why any book at all? Well, watch while we tell his story. It's a true one. And I think you'll understand. It began in a pub in Dublin, Ireland. For it fills the air with a rapture cheer, and it's good for me and you. So take off your coats and free your throats with a real old bout in June. And the day of the day of the day What's wrong with you, Liam? The drinks, of course. What do you mean, the drinks? I paid you only a minute ago, Liam. For the last round you did, but you just now ordered another. Ah, your money grabbing old skinflint. That'll be eightpence. That'll be two shillings. That's all you ever hear from this fella. Arithmetic. <laughs> there you are. You satisfied? Matt, why don't you make it simple for the poor man and hand him over all your money when you come through the door? Now, oh, Joe, that's a good idea. Now, why didn't I think of that myself? That's a good idea, Joe. You're, you're not going to do it, Matt. <laughs> not, not your whole week's pay. Certainly I'm going to do it. It's me friends, ain't it? Finest men of the world, my friends are. <laughs> do you mean it now, Matt? I do. Do you want me to hold all your money? I do. And I drink against it. I never take any of us home anyway. <laughs> What'll they say at home, Matt? What's your father gonna do? I bet all Dublin will hear old Charlie Talbot roar in the night. Ah, uh, what else do I ever hear from him? Only roaring. Liam? Oh. Liam! Another whiskey. For everyone. Now come here to me. Come here to me now. I'm warning you. No arithmetic. <laughs> <laughs> come on now, boys. Let's drink a toast to Matt Talbot. Good the man. The best friend a man ever had. Good man, Fat Joy. Good man. <laughs> There's a little old still at the foot of the hill and the smoke rolls up to the sky. Now, Charlie, wait a few minutes when Mike comes in because he'll be tired and don't tell him right away now. And the smoke rolls up to the sky. Oh, hello, Mother Janet. How are you? Come on in, Matt. Sit down and have your dinner. Oh, yes, yes. I, I have my dinner, yeah. And she can easy tell at the whiff of the smell. And this whiskey boys so fine. Mother, the only thing he'll have an appetite for is a, a cup of strong tea. <laughs> Get him his cup of tea. He's going to need it before I've done with him. Now look here, my fine Hey, fella. hey, hey, by the way you're shouting, you must have a drop taken yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Be quiet. This is no laughing matter. Oh, Charlie, can't you leave him alone a minute? Why should he take his cap off? He's got no respect for his own father. But things oh. are going to be different from now on. Today, my supervisor came to me and started talking about the responsibilities of my position and how the ports and docks... Ah, the devil take the ports and docks. <coughs> what did you say? What did you say? <laughs> oh, such language I never thought to hear in the house of a civil servant. The man said, the devil take the ports and docks. Be quiet! Stop it! Stop it, the both of you! Neither of you has any, any right to say anything to the other. And before you open your mouth, neither of you. Sure, I thought with the three of his working steady, we might, we might be able to have a little something. But no, you're working like cart horses to support the pubs. Matt, I'm delivering my final ultimatum. You'll never again set foot in Omara's. Oh, you don't say so. Well, I'm not giving up me friends and the only bit of pleasure I have in life for anyone. And that goes for your anointed ports and ducks. Oh, Matt, sure you'll get fired. Just when for the first time in our lives we're able to keep up with the rent and have a bit of decent food on the table. Rent. Rent for a pigsty. Ah. Food. Potatoes. 
and a bit of stinking fish. Where do you think you're going? I'm going out to meet friends at O'Mara's. Matt, Matt, wait, I, I'm coming with you. Oh, no, fear, don't you go. This one drunk is enough in the family. We're only having a bit of fun. Fun as I... Hey, ah, here now, here oh, now, here now. You've broken a stick across our backs for the last time. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, going no, 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 Matt went back to O'Mara's that night and other nights. There was no stopping him now. He got himself another job so he could spend his nights as he pleased. All he wanted now was the drink. At first he got the drink with cash. And then he got it on credit in pubs all over the neighborhood. He kept this up until there was no cash left or any more credit to be had. And then he descended to a terrible and desperate thing. Hey, man. Any chance of a few halfpence for the poor old fiddler? I'll play you a tune that'll make you forget the harp that once through Tara's halls. <laughs> Did you get nothing out of this collection of all Mara's debtors? <laughs> hey, wait a minute, fiddler. Do you know that tune, the real old mountain Jew? There's a little old still at the foot of the hill where the smoke rolls up to the sky. And you take off your coat and you clear your throat with the real old mountain Jew. Yeah, yeah. Aye, and I'll be happy to play it for you, mister, if you'd care to cross me palm with a few havens. Oh, certainly, certainly. Come on up to the counter, though, first, and have a drink. How oh, would you like? The heavens, I think I'll have a large, yeah. creamy pint of porter, sir. And God bless you for the same, for I've a portion forced on me. And how are you going to pay for it? I'll look after that in a minute, Liam. Hey, Pat. Come here. Now listen careful, Pat. Keep this old fiddler in chat for a while. Then meet me outside Uncle Slick, the pawnbrokers, in about ten minutes. The pawnbrokers? Shh. What for? Wait, I show you. A hey, uh, fiddler. Would you like me to hold your fiddle for you so you can enjoy your drink properly? Ah, no, no, that's all right. It's not in the way. Go on, go ahead and have a good drink. Ah, there's nothing like the old porter for taking the thirst away. I bet it's a long time since you had one, is it? Oh. Why don't you get your last one now? Tell us, when uh, did you got the last one? But there's nothing sure like it. Sure, that porter's grand oh, for you, isn't it? You like that, eh? You like that, eh? The porter's good for him. <laughs> oh, big God, that was grand. <laughs> Now, where's me fiddle so I can play that decent man the tune I promised? He was minding me fiddle. Where did he get to at all? Where's me fiddle? Those blaggards stole your fiddle. And they're out now trying to sell it or pawn it to get money to buy drink. What's that you're saying, Liam? Who do you think you're accusing, eh? You and Matt Talbot and all the rest of your thieving crew. And I suppose if they brought the money back, you'd be refusing to take it. Well, that's a matter of business, man. You're a hypocrite. Your conscience stops right here at this bar. I'm a hypocrite? Yes, you are. But a day came when Matt couldn't pay, borrow, or steal. Oh, oh Matt, Phil, Phil. I'd be looking for you. Would you buy me a drink? Ah, oh, you took the words right out of me mouth. Just come from home and there's not a shilling to be had there. Well, never mind, never mind. We get our drinks all right. My friends will be along in a minute. As for that Liam there. Oh, tell her, tell her, me old friend. Uh, I'm in a desperate hurry, man. Uh, yes, but uh, Joe, as a matter of fact, I... Uh... <sighs> Kelleher must have something on his mind. Uh, he's on to you, Matt. He knows you're down to your jacket and your slippers again. But I'll still get me drink. I'll still get me drink. My friends will be along in a minute, you'll see. Here's me chance now. Pat Doyle! Pat Doyle, the old friend. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd like to meet your friend, Pat, and treat us both, but, uh, well, I'm a little short, you know. Well, no, Matt, sure, I, I just met him myself, and, and he has the money. And I don't know him well enough to ask a favor. Be friends, after all the times I've bought for them. Well, you're going to stand there all day. I'm going home. Ah, it's no use. I told you, mother hasn't a shilling left. I'm going home. Matt. 
You're home early. And you're sober. Yes, Mother. Well, I suppose you'll be wanting a cup of tea? No, thanks, Mother. No tea now. But I'd like a bit of bread. Matt. There's no bread. No bread? No, and the grocer won't let us put another thing in the bill. Oh, the louses. You've no bread. And I've been throwing me money away in a crowd of drunken wasters. Oh, Mother. What am I going to do? I'm no good. I've done nothing but break your heart. Ah, oh, Matt, you would be good. You'd be good if it wasn't for this one thing. You're a spile in everything. How long is it since you've been to Mass? Well, I'll be getting that tea. I have to go to the pump to get some water. I'll be back in a minute. Look at yourself, Matt Talbot. What are you? What are you going to do? Oh, I know what I should do. Well, if was there a drink there, I'd take it. I'd take it! Have it damn me soul to hell. Oh, God help me. How can I give it up? I'll have your tea for you in a minute. Thanks, Mother. Mother. Mother, I'm going to take the pledge. Oh, Matt, don't make the promise unless you mean to keep it. I do mean to keep it, Mother. And I've got to take it now. Oh, then go. In God's name, go. May he grant you the strength to live up to it. Great was the astonishment at O'Mara's when Phil Talbot brought the word that Matt had taken the pledge. But the boys all agreed he'd soon be back. Yet the very next time Pat Doyle ran into Matt. Matt! Matt Talbot! Where have you been keeping yourself? Did you miss the boys, Matt? Well, it's not easy being alone all the time after work. O'Mara's isn't the same without you. There's one man above all I'd like to meet from there. The fiddler. The fiddler? The one I robbed of his fiddle. Oh, that one. No, I don't think I've seen him since. I just have to keep on looking for him, I suppose. Take a pull, Matt. No, no thanks, I won't. You didn't take the pledge for life. Now, you didn't let them do that to you, Matt. No, no, the priest is holding me down for three months at a time, but... You go ahead and have your drink, Pat, and then come on with me. Where are we going? Take a drink. All right, come on. Now, where to? Never mind now, you'll see. I pledge with the assistance of God. I promise with the assistance of God and in honor of his sacred thirst. 
and in honor of his sacred thirst to abstain from all intoxicating drink. To... To abstain from all intoxicating drink. For a period of three months. For a period of... Three months? Good man. Now that you have him, Father, you might as well make him go to his duty. All right, Pat. Into the confession box there with you. I'll wait for you. Pat. You're a coward, Pat Doyle. That's a nice thing to be saying to me, Matt. After I came to tell you I'm sorry I ran away. But, but that came on me kind of sudden, like... Need your hat. Thanks, Matt. Someday you'll even thank me for the pledge. It's what you need, Pat. Well, there are a lot of things I need, Matt, but the pledge isn't one of them. Look at me, Jack. I'm out at the elbow. Oh, well, now I might be able to do something for you there, too. Come on inside of the room. I think I have one that'll fit you. Sit down there, Pat, while I get you the jacket. You're reading books now, Matt? Aye, the devil of a job at first, but I've got the hang of it now. The Old Testament, New Testament, the book of spiritual instruction. Sure, you've had no more schooling than me, Matt. What are you doing with these? Well, I asked the Reverend Fathers to help me with the hard parts, and I say a prayer to the Holy Ghost before I start to read. <laughs> Would take the power of God, sure enough. Aye. Well, sit down, Pat, and I'll get to the jacket. It's in my box over here. What the devil kind of a place is this? Don't tell anybody now, Pat. Now, promise me you won't tell anybody. So it's through the things I've been hearing about you. That you're fasting on dry bread and tea, and you, you spend all of your time out of work and church. You're a, you're a saint now, Matt. Oh, no, Pat, no. The saints are near to God. You don't know how close I am to the devil. With all this? Well, you know, Pat, when you mean with all your heart and soul to keep the pledge, your body keeps remembering the drink. Ah, the poor old body. <laughs> it's like a it's like a horse that you've let run wild. And when you want to work it again, it's, it's gone out of the habit. You have to keep a tight rein on it. Sometimes sometimes you have to chain it down. Well sure it's it's thirsty. Perishing for a drop. Oh Pat. Pat! Are you only taking the pledge? Well, I bought this one before I took the pledge, and therefore it doesn't count. No, it's me last one, Matt. Me last one. Ah, you're going to find doing without it hard at first. Yes, it's hard. Sometimes it nearly tears you to bits. But once you've made your peace with God, once you're back to prayer and the sacraments, that's what gets you over the hard times, Pat. What I can do, surely you can. One of you, give me my jacket, I'll, I'll be going. Oh, oh yes, I've got you. There we are, Pat. Let's see how this looks on you. Ah, oh, that's fine. But well, don't forget to say a prayer for me, Pat. And I'll be doing the same for you. Thanks for the jacket, Matt.
It's not easy changing your ways. Matt Talbot needed all the strength he could find from his prayers in the days that came after. Temptation was never far distant, and sometimes it almost tore him to pieces. Oh, God, don't let me go back. Please. I won't. I won't. Oh, God, please. Let me see the color of your money first. Oh, let me see the color of your money. Yeah, no it's good. not like the old days, Joe, when Matt Talbot was here. No. Oh, he'll be back. I have me doubts. You know, it must be three months now. Well, it's about as long as the, the best of them lasts. Matt's going to end up like old Barry here. You know, every Saturday night, Barry takes the pledge for life. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's different with Matt, though. No, I have me doubts. Where? Speak to the devil. Matt! Matt! Yes. How, are you? Yes. how are you doing, Matt? Hello, Pat. How are you? That's kind of Larkin sweet. wanted a drink, so I came along. Sure! Right. Well, yes, my Mark, turn about yes, there you look so, grand. so the three months is up now, Matt, eh? Yes, Pat. We three months are up. Well, come on now, boys. Let's celebrate the joyful return of Matt Talbot to <laughs> And just to show how glad I am, I'll threat. <laughs> Here, Matt, come on. we'll drink a toast to your pledge. May it rest in peace. Yes, yes, I'll drink to my pledge. Good! Good. 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 Here, Good. I say, I say, I say, Liam, a, a whiskey for Matt. Oh, and, and Liam, make an extra step. Hey, excuse me, excuse me, Pat. Do you mind if I order me on? Of course not. Liam, give me a glass of mineral water. Thanks, Liam. To me pledge, may I keep it the rest of my life. And keep it the rest of his life he did, although it was always a struggle. What everybody in the neighborhood saw was a steady, hard-working little man who always had a kind word and a pleasant smile for everybody. A little man who could always be depended upon for a loan. Even the price of a glass of porter for a man who wasn't a steady drinker. They didn't know the other part of it. The joy of coming closer to God. Sunday morning, the 7th of June, 1925. Matt Talbot was 68 years old and in the 41st year of his pledge. On this day, the truth about him finally came out. He was walking down Granby Lane on his way to Mass. won't last. My poor man, you're going to heaven. What's this? The smile and the chain. Together, they told the story of Matt Talbot. And more and more people came to understand that here was a man who had found it possible to climb up from the gutter and live close to God. They came and they still come to his grave to ask his help. Their petitions are many. But mostly they ask for freeing themselves or someone in the family from the slavery of drink. And they know it is true what he used to say. What I can do. Surely you can. This story has been presented by the Third Order of St. Francis, a group of people who are trying to put the ideals of St. Francis of Assisi to work in our world today. If you want to share in this work in any way, write to the Hour of St. Francis in care of this station. Anyone who writes will receive a souvenir remembrance, the beautiful peace prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. <laughs>